guys, welcome to The Shades Tale, a second edition Iron Claw actual play game. Um, we're going to start by introducing our cast of characters, and then we're going to do a recap for last session, because not all of us were able to make it last session. Um, but yeah, let's begin. Uh, cat incoming. <laughs> all right, so let's get started, though, um, with Theta. Theta is joining us via chat. This week, um, Theta, why don't you tell us about your um, character, Harmon, um, their current goals, and motto. Harmon de Polier, donkey soldier, a relentless personality, give him victory or death, and his only goal is to eliminate the syndicate from the over Board of War territory. All right, excellent. And next up, we've got uh, Ark playing Connor. Hello, I am Mark Lord. I play Connor Levera de Equinese, the uh, Raisin Raccoon Knight, whose motto is one hand washes the other, and his goal is to end the Smith's crime spree in Evan Court territory. Excellent. And then next up, we've got Griffin playing an unknown guy. Yes, that's right. I'm the anonymous Armadillo Almoner who. Uh, is the group's doctor. He has a phlegmatic personality, and his motto is first do no harm, second get paid. And he has only one goal as well. Alright. Last but not least, we've got Rafferty playing Anushka. Hello, world. Uh, yes, uh, I am playing Anushka, the microbat messenger, where my motto is no, no fear, serve with joy. And yeah, so, goals on my list. Did we send a message to the syndicate? I think you said we didn't. We uh, did, actually. We sure did. Oh, we did. Oh, okay. Well, then I need an award for that. Yeah. Wow. And we, what did we uh, hand out for that? And I guess, did you finish the rescue of uh, Potter and Bruce? We did yes. that. As yes. Well. Yeah, yeah, that was harrowing. All right. And I think that was, did Did we pick up, um, what was it, like low profile or something for that? The, uh, the that two newest gifts I have are okay. uh, Insider Trade with the Trading Company and Knack for Negotiation. Hmm, okay. That was Knack for my own? I feel like that... Knack for Negotiations, you. Insider with the yeah. trading company would be what we got. Yeah, okay. there you go. Perfect. <clears throat> and, okay. yeah, and then we got low profile for saving him. Yeah, low profile was the gift for rescuing Bruce from the dungeons. Right, since we mingled with the staff. One of my yeah. favorite gifts we had. Yeah. Um... All right, so yeah, so let's do a recap of last session. So we'll pick off, uh, pick up from last session where you guys were escaping via your busted cart um, carriage away from Enclum territory. They gave up pursuit, and you were able to to lose them. Um, along the journey, you got to speak with the lion who you uh, rescued alongside of Bruce. Bruce and the doctor, turns out, had kind of a burgeoning friendship going on. Um, they don't have exactly the same uh, approach to the worship of Sa'alumer, but they're both very interested theologians, so they had a, a nice long debate there. The lion Meadows, you found out, was a, an Aluman smith. He was the apprentice to a master Alamon weaponsmith whose uh, lands and well, his shop was destroyed and he was captured. His father was killed by the Enclume, who were trying to, um, I guess, get access to his father's secret Alamon mines. However, um, he claimed he didn't know them. Meadows claimed he did not know the secret, and they kept him there for several months where he befriend befriended Bruce. Um, the entire party got back to the uh, Ferme Rouge, where the Lavere family, Connor's family, resides. They brought um, Bruce back. Connor's father, the Baron, was grateful to see everyone. Um, and th through a little bit of prodding, Potter, Connor's squire, got up the courage to ask if he could be knighted when asked what sort of reward he would like for his service to the Lavere family. And the Baron seemed into this idea. However, Connor's youngest brother, Arthur, was completely offended by this notion and challenged Potter to a duel. The duel was fought publicly. Con uh, Potter actually won the duel, getting first uh, 
drawing first blood from Arthur, who flew into a rage, determined to kill Potter. He sort of disgraced himself and was excused from the chamber. Potter gained his knighthood. Um, after that, there was a great celebration where Meadows the lion was determining whether he should um, reclaim his father's alumin mine. He actually does know where it was. Or if he should turn to a life of uh, piety um, after getting him very, very drunk. <laughs> he confesses that he got enough money to hire Harmon, the master uh, sword wielder, to help him reclaim his mind from the goblins that, that currently control it. Um, but uh, the doctor convinced him to, or suggested that perhaps he should walk the path of, of peace and enlightenment instead. And so the next day he donated all of that money to the church and has begun his path to becoming an acolyte. I think that is where the negotiation gift came from. <laughs> Because you uh, finally managed to turn someone to the, uh, to convert someone to, uh, um, yeah. Yep, that's to right. <laughs> so, all right. So then that was that. Um, so the next day, Harmon and uh, the doctor started poking around Ferme Rouge for clues as to this syndicate currently uh, that has been operating for quite some time that you guys are trying to put down. And you track them down to, um, well, they attack certain warehouses in the shipping district. You guys, uh, Harmon got himself hired to defend one of them. And um, there was an infiltration by two black clad weasels wielding um, kind of like gravity hammers. They're like metal balls on the ends of chains. And Harmon was easily able to slay one of them, drive the other one off with a warning to the syndicate. And at that point, uh, the syndicate was... Uh, um, yeah, so at that point, um, he had completed his goal of warning off of sending a message to the syndicate. They brought the body of the slain weasel to the local constabulary, who said that um, these guys have been a blight on the merchants' guilds all across Fermerouge and to the south along the coast, and no one has been able to actually successfully capture, let alone kill one of them. So he employs Harmon to put an end to this, and that is where we have our current goal. Um, so they decide to start where they, they left off. They go back to the warehouse, and the next night there's another group of these thieves who infiltrate, but in much greater numbers, there is a fight waged, you and the party, Harmon and the party drive off, uh, kill or drive off pretty much all of them. They leave one who was dying and they stabilize him. And now you guys have this one uh, black clad weasel thief in your company at your mercy. And I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong. I think he spoke uh, a couple words of common. Um, so I think that's where we're going to pick up. Let me see. Managing goals are given to everyone at this point, so that's something we all got. Yep, so everyone got uh, a gift for um, for Meadow's conversion to the light. Well, I wasn't a part of that, so... Right, I guess it depends on how you want to how you want to roll with it. I would not begrudge Anushka keeping pace with the party, but, you know... Um, if, if I wasn't there when it started, stuff. I wasn't there when it finished. Uh, the... The trade-off I get is I had plot protection. Right, yeah, you were never at any risk. So I guess that does make sense. Okay, then. So, um, are there any questions? Did I miss any important information? <laughs> I think this is all good. Well, the stickler me wants to say that the language isn't common, but Calabrese. That's your language here. <laughs> no, you are very true. It is Calabrese. That's my, my 5e showing. I apologize. Um, I guess important part would be Anushka actually getting paid by Connor's family. Correct. You got money, Anushka. Getting paid is extremely important. It is important. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly how much you guys did get paid. I think it was a fair price. You basically asked for money and they were like, yeah, we got that. Yeah, I asked for like an Ariel here, basically. Right. And I mean, Anushka, you would have had the opportunity to ask for another boon instead of money if there was something specifically you wanted to ask from the uh, from the no, no. Levier family. Money's good. OK. One point five many is Arthur. Sorry, yeah. I'm just oh, catching no, up I, the chat. I would take the money. OK. All right. You're taking the money. Um, I believe it was an Oriole then for Anushka as well. 
Another guy got away. We have the one guy that didn't die, but didn't run away. And right, Harmon only got paid what Connor owed him. Um, which I think is still was that more dinar, which was more than a mortal, but still. That's true. I think they're kind of assuming that that's part of <laughs> that. That's the payment Harman charges more for, for his services, essentially. And then he gets paid for it too, so. I don't remember if my wealth got refreshed or not yet. I I think it did. I just didn't mark it down. Sorry, I, I kind of missed don't that. Don't think I used it right away. What were you? What didn't you use yet? Well, did I use my wealth after coming back to uh, homelands? I feel like I have a faint memory that you did, but I can't remember what it was that you would have used it for. I feel like you. If it's marked on my sheet as being used and you have a faint memory, I will count on what you say and leave it intact. Yeah, I'm trying to uh I'm trying to place it here, but Yeah, okay. I, I think it's a safe bet that you used it. I remember thinking like, oh, you just got your wealth back and you were like, I'm using it. But all right, so um, let's pick up uh, where we left off. I think if we've covered all of the catch up here. So you guys are currently in a warehouse um, near the uh, shipping district within the city of Femme Rouge, covered in ketchup. The um, and uh, there's gore on the floor. There's several dead bodies around you. Actually, we still have the map here. It might not be that important. But um, this one uh, weasel, he does um, he does look defiantly at you as you guys resuscitate him, and he will say, "Let's see what we had here." Yeah, <laughs> all right. So um, he will look at you, and he'll. Uh, narrow his eyes at you, Harmon, and he'll say, you're dead. Dead. Dead men. Uh, he'll shake his head, and he'll say, you cross Blue Dragon. No one survives who crosses the Blue Dragon. Dragons? Foreigners? Oh yes, these guys are clearly foreign. Um, and I will add that when you brought the body back to the sheriffs uh, the first time you killed one of them and examined the body, you found that they had a brand sort of hidden in one armpit under the arm. It was a circular design that looked sort of like a dragon-like character. Maybe not like a, a bipedal dragon, but more like a snake dragon of ancient legend eating its own tail. Okay, weird. <clears throat> Hmm. You should not have crossed a vague Wait, warrior. did somebody put me in charge? I thought... <laughs> uh, I, I thought people like the doctor did all the talking. Well, currently, the Harmon is... not in the scene. He went to sleep. Right, the, the doctor is sleeping it off. Um, currently in this scene, we have got Harmon, we've got Connor, and we've got Connor... Connor has like a small platoon of irregulars with him as well. How many was that again, Connor? Let me see here. Uh, we have Potter, Raphael, Louis, Alfred, Bastion, and Gerald. Right. William is dead. I'm keeping track of how many irregulars you've killed. <laughs> Good. Somebody I think that might be to. the... Someone has to, right? Someone has to remember the names. I think that in all our time, this is probably the first time I've actually gotten to kill one of your irregulars, though. I've, I've wounded some, but... Yeah. 
He died. Well, I will fighting. say I do hope that they actually become useful in combat rather than facing D sixes versus D eights. Uh, right. Yeah. Is there a path in the book for getting improved irregulars? I know no. that you can improve you improve individual allies. allies. No, you can only That's... improve it. We were yeah, concerned that, that jobbers, player... you get more of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a player who has allies can be overwhelming for the experience because they effectively have more agency in the game. They have more characters. Right, yeah. It's already a an impressive amount that you can, like like I said, bring a small gang with you wherever you go. Um, you know, and we're, we're playing it kind of straight with the equipment rules, so you are equipping them to be fighters. Uh, so I don't feel overly that bad. Yeah, they <laughs> they are come armed. with their own gear, but because these are raccoons, for the most part, I did buy them knives so they can use them with dexterity gifts. Nice, nice. Ambi dexterity. Okay. All right. So yeah. So currently in the scene, and Anushka, I don't know what you would be up to. It's conceivable that you might have, if you wanted to, have helped Connor. What Connor was basically doing. Harmon had was staking this place out on his own, you know, effectively on his own. But um, Connor was sort of like patrolling the area with his irregulars, trying not to look like they're actively waiting to ambush anyone who's going to rob the place. But as soon as the fighting broke out, they they all ran to the warehouse. Um, be casual. Yeah. So um, if you wanted to be. Well, I always have an excuse, but when I'm, I'm not here, I'm working. So delivering messages is something I can do quite a bit. Cool. And, okay. Oh, good. I'm on the map. Oh, wait. This is the old map. This is an old map that we repurposed in a pinch. So <laughs> ignore the furnishings. Great. It was just a... Yeah. Uh, that's what I love about coming to Average Plot Territory there. Um, and coming to the east. Their inns are always so large. <laughs> and that's such wonderful floor space. Well, when um, you've got that movement speed, right? Whoosh. Yep, I won't bump into walls this time. <laughs> um uh, you know that that that's just a myth that we go around getting caught in people's hair. It only happened once. One time. One time one time. But um no, uh uh, uh, let's see. I think uh, for a brief moment in uh, Anushka's life, uh, sure, the politics may be in turmoil, but um, uh, yeah, I'm not on some dire mission to say, I mean, sure, there's the uh, specter hanging over my head of whatever happened to De La Vera. Mm -hmm. uh, when's the last time we saw that guy you saw him uh, I don't know if you saw him you might have caught a glimpse of him in uh, Enclume when you guys were fleeing the city he was I he think was we kind did of... hear about him but I'm not sure yeah. if I saw him uh, I was too busy clinging to the reins for dear life <laughs> yeah um, you know because this thing flips over and we all go down uh, that, that was indeed harrowing uh, so um yeah, no. Uh, uh, I could immediately just um, fly off into the night, never to be seen again. But instead, I have to return here because uh, um, I I've shared too many adventures with these people. Uh, and uh, the, the continuing regret that Gaston will never be here to see it. Oh, okay. But he lives on in the spirit of how I stab people to death with his stuff. As he would have wanted. <laughs> oh. um, so, no. Uh, um, really, uh, I'm just here to see all this plays out. And honestly, uh, Connor is our uh, blooded agent uh, in all of this. So, uh, I follow him. All right. All right, then if you're following Connor, it would make sense that perhaps you did not contribute in the fight. I mean, you didn't contribute in the fight, but you might no. be nearby helping him scout. Well, and also delivering message. I am a professional message. So. True, true. There's always work for that. That is true. All right, so um, back inside this warehouse, Harmon and Connor um, and Connor's pack, you guys are standing over this this weasel um like i said he looks hurt 
he's um i mean he is hurt he was on death's door he's currently i suppose sick and injured and hurt and all of that good stuff um but he's staring at you defiantly um waiting holding his breath seeing what's the next move is going to be all right Harmon has stated his last words were blue dragon well you shouldn't have crossed a vagrant warrior um the uh the weasel will spit on the floor and say uh kill me then kill me my my brothers will come for you And then, so Harmon kills him, okay? It's a trivial matter for Harmon to kill this, this individual. That's right, because Harmon has had experience... In Zhongguo. And knows that this might be a matter of honor as well. As for Connor, I would imagine it might come across as a little bit hasty. But what does Connor think? Was Connor doesn't know what a big warrior is. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, Connor, you can Sorry, you can just speak if you like. Big warrior is some kind of fighting homeless person. <laughs> I have to imagine that was that's uh it's directed at Harmon. Yes. Um. Wandering practitioner of the martial path. You know, at some point, it's not irregulars anymore when you buy enough of them. Then is he standing or me? Yeah. Yeah. We're getting What's the there. What's the name of the Berserker? The Hawk? Is that the name of the mercenary company? I never read that. Or it's Berserk, not Berserker. I've lost all credit. <laughs> Did you? Kind of just nod at that, at some kind of zombie thing. Mm. All right. So, um, Harmon dispatches this weasel. Um, he might see some sort of, uh, recognize a glint of appreciation. Or of of like fair play in the weasel's eyes as they go dark. And now you all are alone in the warehouse. Just um well, I believe it was probably a total of like three or four bodies, uh, if we're including Connor's fell soldier. As alone as seven men can be, true. Well, nobles often do have hangers on and attendants, either here for a chance of money or a chance for glory. Glory was found by some of them at the very least. Um... Uh, I'm going to say yeah. that... Hmm. Well, I was going to ask Connor, like, we're not actually edging towards open warfare, are we? 
Right. Harmon is, is going to stay. I think Raphael, one of the irregulars, um, is going to say that, like, well, it's unlikely that they'll be back again, right? I mean, we beat them quite soundly. Six more days of four hours a night. Mm. Well, I suppose not. Uh, Raphael seems like he's uninterested in uh, spending the, ne the rest of the night in this warehouse, which now reeks quite a lot of dead body. But, um, you know, he defers to Connor on their plans. I say we stay and uh, Harmon has been kind enough to stay by my side even when I wasn't paying him, so I'm going to return the favor. All right. Your men are going to, um, well, they're going to stick out the night, the rest of your regulars, with you, Connor, because they were, they're here for a job and they're going to do the job. They're loyalish to you. But I do think it, we might have to do another Irregulars roll at Daybreak to see who sticks around for more of this action. Yeah, exactly where are we again? You are in Ferme Rouge. That's right, we're in Ferme Rouge. Right, so some of them might... This is a big city. Some of them might leave for better prospects. Yeah. Uh, how is morale? I would say that currently morale is probably at an all-time low since this is the first time one has actually died. Oh, um, then yeah, that's right. Because then definitely there might be deserters. You, uh, if you think it's an all-time low, well, we had what one loss? Yes, one loss. Okay, yeah. Because I was thinking you could even put a penalty on this, but that wasn't Connor's fault. That's just we just had a loss, right? Yeah, it wasn't through anything he did. He just took yeah. an unlucky hit right, with the chain hammer. From. People think this is a bummer deal, but they're not mad at Connor. Yeah. They knew okay. what, that this was. there were risks going in. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Yep. And we're going to say that none of these guys have ever encountered one of these uh, strange foreign thieves. As I mentioned before, they dressed all in black, they moved silently, and they were fighting with lengths of chain, which is a very, it's an unorthodox weapon, I imagine. Honest warfare, not any of this weird stuff. Yeah. If it's not in stabbing range, you can't stab it. Yeah, it's at an all-time low because there was this was the first death. There will be a new all-time low when more than one yeah. dies. Yeah, I signed up to murder grandmothers in their sleep. <laughs> wait, did I say that out loud? No, wait, wait, let me rephrase it. I signed up I mean, to murder grandparents in their sleep. <laughs> oh, they have to be grandparents, not just old people. Oh, you're charmer. Okay, so yeah, then. Um, as you guys serve out the rest of your watch here tonight, there is no more, uh, there is not a second attack, I think, as the dawn draws closer, some of the irregulars will begin to, uh, to tidy up the bodies here out of some sort of soldierly instinct to keep order. Um, and then... bodies in the street. <laughs> Did you say you one of them in much? the warehouse? <laughs> yeah, you guys are going to be hiding in crates in here for the next three hours. You don't want to have to necessarily. You especially don't want angry dead. Yeah, yeah, right. That's a concern. I'm going to the doctor on this issue. Aren't you supposed to know something? I can't. You do last rites. Are you ordained? Well, no, but I'll do them anyway for a price. Uh, so you'll do them, but I, well, yeah. <laughs> I guess it'll have to do. Well, I doubt uh, their next of kin is going to go and ahead and collect them, so we may as well do it. Was it really necessary to wake me up in the middle of the night for this? Wait a second, I'm nocturnal. That's right. Not only are you nocturnal, but it's a corpse. Ah. <sighs> Mm. You know, a man died here. I can't believe I come back and I find out you guys are sleeping next to a corpse. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I was sleeping in the middle of town, so. <laughs> you were sleeping at a bar? Oh, well, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have gone to go fetch him because he's not a real priest. Herman does, hasn't slept? You mean doesn't Ouch. sleep? Yeah, but so yeah, the, now on. Yeah, now, if you come and fetch the doctor, a, he'll come along. I mean, <laughs> you wouldn't want to keep a corpse in the same room, especially one that died by violence. That's a recipe for undead. Mm. Yep, time to put their spirits to rest so that uh, the inherent evil of this land you doesn't. You can't actually them. do that. You don't actually have the right rights or authority to do that. Look, I was taught a very simple lesson by my teacher that whether or not you have the rights, six feet of dirt will stop a whole lot. That's very <laughs> true. Now we'll need to find a kid with a shovel. Where are we going to bury him? <laughs> I thought we were oh, in the no. middle of the city. Well, we can drag them outside of town. I doubt, like, I doubt they'd let us just bury them in the city. You know, I think I'm just going to hang out in the rafters and not worry and, and um, not sleep. Uh, right. So, so the doctor is busy d bothering the bodies then. More successes. From the uh, ally roll, uh, the regular roll, which means they have five units. So the number of remaining guys does not change. Okay. Unless you don't want to count local knowledge. No, I like no local knowledge for this. I mean, this is the only place where you're going to get it, right? It's your yeah. hometown. It's your turf. Okay. Usually people um, sell that back, but. I wanted to kind of remain a man of the people, you know? <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. All right. So those that are with you are still with you. They understand the risks involved in that. This was always a possibility. Uh, one of them would fall, but to fall gloriously in combat at the side of a leader that they trust, that's uh that's a good way to go. Um, yeah. Currently you guys are at, not in an inn, as is this repurposed map would suggest, but in a warehouse, um, when are we going to find that guy? Which guy? Oh, a leader we can trust, right? <laughs> Sick burn, Connor. Um, all right. So, yeah, you guys can spend the next morning um, finding a spot to bury these individuals. Um, on the edge of the outskirts of town. The quote unquote auditor's field. Sorry? Oh, just use minimal biblical reference, basically the quote unquote potter's field. Ah, mm hmm. Sorry, uh, Ark, I'm going to turn up your volume a little bit because I don't know why you're coming through a little bit money for me today. Is this better? Yes. Yeah. I was leaning about a foot away from where I was sitting now, so that's why it was quieter. Microphones. Okay. All right. Sorry, hold on a sec. Okay, so um, the next morning you are uh, you finish burying the bodies. You are approached by the uh, constable. He um, a detail I forgot to mention was just prior to the attack on the warehouse, um, one of the ships in the harbor was set ablaze. Um, it did not distract any of you from the fight at hand, but it did call the attention of the local police force and. Um, the uh, the sheriff that you had met with the night before will approach your group. He says, uh, uh, I hear that you had more trouble last night. Would have um, caught up with you sooner, but we had some difficulties of our own to attend to. Well, seems to have been nothing that uh, Harmon and Connor couldn't have handled. <clears throat> no, certainly, certainly not. 
for however long it takes, my irregular coachman is now transporting William's body back to his family. So he's not being buried with these nameless near the wells. Right. I'll probably go and arrange someone who's actually ordained to go do last rites, but... Oh, did you actually hire a coachman? I have one as one of my regulars. So oh, I guess good. this comes as hiring one. Not that yeah. I could drive your wagon. I'm <laughs> intimately familiar with it. So, so on the sub uh, subject of the wagon... I guess I had meant to ask this. Hold on. If kind of people are going to be in patrol it lights. It's damaged, I remember. I don't know if we ever repaired it. On the dock. That's actually a good plan, Army. Oh, no. We definitely didn't repair it. <clears throat> we yeah. definitely did? Didn't. Did didn't, not. Yeah. So it's leaning to one side going, k-tunk, k-tunk, k-tunk. Yeah. yeah let's let's see how much Vicky's labor is going to cost, and I'll go ahead. It doesn't have a big lance spy or half spear stuck in the side of it, does it? <laughs> I mean, that doesn't look suspicious. It might have the the remains of one sticking out okay. of it. Right. If you just want some skilled labor, it's like two denara a day. Right. Well, you guys, it was pretty badly busted up. It's at the point where it's not totaled, but it's going to require a cart right to actually get it going again. One more, one more mistake. Uh, it's a miracle that the springs are still good. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna. We're going to need to hire a cart right. In fact, possibly even a master cart right to fix it. Yeah, I was wondering. Um, just master would be three in our day. Did these. Uh, okay, it's not so bad. Um, I was wondering, though, did these guys have. Do, or do carriages actually have like spring shocks in them? Oh, yeah, in this time period, yeah. Well, wow, okay, springs cool. don't have to be made out of metal, they can be made out of wood. Yes, huh. it's not as good. Yes, they break more often. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. if you don't have any springs then you just have an axle that we bolted directly to the road that means any time you were irre- any irregularity you know your axle would be under stress yeah so you, you have carriage. to have uh you know some kind of and it's this is a carriage not just like a cart right, right. so like it will cost to... more to replace than to just repair this one well but also by its nature it would actually have better <clears throat> springs in fact it might even have metal springs i'd have to look up in this time period right. but yeah and you're supposed to carry spares of those which i assume we don't because we're not an actual carriage company mm-hmm. uh so connor do you want to pay like three dinar for a master yeah okay we might need them for more than one day well, i can yeah. pay for i have five That's dinar left uh, they got 3d8 dice if we want to roll and see how many days it takes. Mm-hmm. Oh, how about this? Let's 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 see. Let's talk to the guy. So you guys find the uh, local Cartwright. He's an armadillo um, named Albert. Um, when you bring your cart to him, he whistles a, a low tone of disbelief. He's like, "It's amazing. This thing is still mobile at all." As you guys have seen some action there. And he's pokes around the thing. He's uh, checking the axles, um, what remains of your wheels and your your shocks. Um, he says, uh, "This is, uh, you know, if you're going to be in <laughs> trade in for a wagon. I mean, he's got a good supply of wagons. None of them are they're wagons, right? They're not nearly as nice as this. But he says, um, it is within his uh, his." Uh, capability of fixing this thing it's going to take a, a couple days um and if you'd like to pay a little bit extra he could sort of outfit this thing with some uh defensive armor of sorts on the wagon um and make the the whole thing a little bit heavier put a little extra strain on your your driving well, I animals dropped a, i dropped a picture of this uh like the, this is literally the stereotypical like carriage you guys are thinking of with the giant spoked wheels that poke out the sides. Mm-hmm. So you can't, you know, we could reinforce it, but it's never going to be battle worthy because people can just blow the crap out of it. Gotcha. So uh, it might be a waste it, of <laughs> as you've been, as the people who are streaming this can't see from the picture I haven't loaded. Like you can see it's got the big wheels and you have the big undercarriage and it sits in the center of it, which gives you a smoother ride. And yeah, there's plenty of places for this thing to be broken. Mm-hmm. 
Um, no, he's trying to cheat you, boss. I have to like poke Connor at this. It's like he's gonna go ahead and repair this and sell this to the next person. Yeah, let's just bring this. In. Let's just bring this in back to uh, new condition. We don't need the armor carriage. That'll make it be too slow. We don't want to have the drays pulling that extra weight. Fair enough. Fair enough. Is is Harmon actually suggesting the battle wagon option? Just because I I have to know because that would be really cool. Well, if you're made of money. Hell yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you would end up with something like a Tau Hoff or a battle tank. All right. It's well, not going to be a. It, the wheels are exposed. It's not going to be a tank. <laughs> it's true. Also, there's, also, the carriage is made of wood, and this is a time period with cannons, not to mention fire magic. Oh, yeah. All right. Sorry, I have to see that. Damn. Yeah, there you go. Defensive from uh, archery and also has, it looks like it's got turrets on it or uh, or arrow slits from the side. Very cool. Let's say he has one of these battle wagons. Again, sorry for the listeners. This is being posted in the uh, in the discord chat, but well, uh, so do you are your uh, irregulars or some of the mercs? We have one scout, one coachman, and four soldiers. Four soldiers. Okay, so did they come with their own crossbows? Yes. Well, so perfect. I tend to equip them with slings and symbols instead of crossbows. Then I salute your plan to make Connor's murder wagon. All right. So you guys... You, are gonna, you know people are going to look at this and they're going to see that this is not a passenger coach. This is a war coach. But actually, right. you're blooded, aren't you? Yes. So uh, we should put your. Do you want to put your coat of arms on this? Well, no, we're already we never going to be inconspicuous with this sort of thing. So you may as well. I mean, at, at least then, because the problem is you don't want to roll in the town in this. In, in you don't want to roll in the town with a war wagon that's flying no colors, because then the people in town will go, "Let's set that on fire." That's mm-hmm. a bunch of bandits who have come here to destroy our signal tower. We're being attacked. And, mm-hmm. the, and before you could say, no, no, wait, I'm really noble, we'll all be in a burning wreck. Yeah, let's have our uh, coat of arms put on there. Yeah, what is your coat of arms? Hmm. I had that there? written down before. Let me see if I can't find it. I'll go get a hurdy dirty so we can play Pop Goes the Weasel as we roll through the neighborhood. Children can come. Yes, yes. Are you here to give us gelato and ice cream? No, we're here to give you murder. M- murder and death. Pop Goes the Weasel is offensive in this world. It's a racially charged song in the world of Iron Claw. The um from what I recall, I think it wasn't it like a crayfish or something. Like I believe you were talking yeah, like, about the origins of the hands family line. Crayfish. Over, yeah, they were the like a field of blue or something. Your crayfish. Yeah, then they we can the... paint on the side. You know how much we charge for the various murders that we do. <laughs> you know, Personal murder, the, noble the murder, food a food truck of murder. Do, do and we also do, sell do we, kebabs. Do. All right, that's our new battle. <laughs> Is that the song we'll be whistling when we go to battle? Goes the weasel. I love this. I love this already. <laughs> what about enter the gladiator. Um, which happens to sound a lot like Pop Goes the Weasel. Mm. Okay. All right. So here's what happens. I've got it. So <clears throat> Arthur, uh, Arthur, not Arthur. Um, Albert. Sorry, Albert, the armadillo Cartwright. Um, he's looking at the uh, your carriage. He says it's going to. It's, it's a bit of a fixer upper. Um, I'll need four dinar uh to do and maybe three days to finish the repairs on this and as he's talking it out um harman spies this battle wagon that we just described has been parked in the lot they're still finishing it up 
Um, it looks like it has not been painted yet. It's in the process of construction. And when you ask about it, Harmon, he says, um, oh, that, yes, that's a, that's a new design we're testing. Um, well, listen, you look like someone who can handle a, a weapon. I actually have, um, a, I'm, a, I'm in a bit of a predicament. I, I'm in a desperate strait, as it were, and I could use someone to maybe help me out. People who, who might be handy in a fight. If you're interested in running a little job for me, I, well, I could part with this design. It is a prototype, but I could part with it um, for all of you um, as, as a separate transaction to, uh, to your carriage. You could leave here with, with both if that's something that you would be interested in for no more than three days of, of work. So he wants us to kill mm -hmm. in return for giving us improved killing. Well, that's pretty much everything you believe in. Everything your monarchy is founded on, isn't it, Connor? Of course. All right. Oh. I almost forgot. While I'm here, here, I want, uh, thank you so much for helping us out with our wagon, uh, sir. Here, have this flyer. If you ever uh, go back to Doloro Domain, they have some excellent wine <laughs> waiting for you. Still have Make these that flyers. Sale. Still have these flyers. Pass them out to everybody. Oh, beautiful. Okay. All right. The um, uh, Dominique back up north her business is booming you guys are going to come back and she's going to have like a line of uh of fancy restaurants set up um but yeah albert is is going to uh he'll elaborate a little bit on his current situation he says that um in a town to the north um maybe a day day and a half travel from here um, he has an associate who he has sold uh, a number of wheels and axles and basically like cart construction pieces. Um, he has sent this shipment several times, two times already. And in both cases, the unpaid labor that he hired has not returned and his buyer on the other end has not received their goods. And at this point, he's convinced that um, they're being attacked, that his... Uh, his his shipments are being intercepted by bandits and that um he thinks that it, it's desperate now his business relationship is on the line and he needs some people to go and uh safeguard this next shipment to make sure it gets where it, it needs to be so even though he he doesn't have contacts um to mercenaries who might be able to help here if you guys are interested in his wares this might be a, a serendipitous trade well, Connor, aren't we in your domain? Don't you serve law? Yes. I'm pretty sure you don't technically have legal authority, but at the same time, who would dare contest it in well, a case of self-defense? But they're outlawed. That means they're outside the law. And also, right, since, Con since Connor is blooded, that means when he goes to claim bounties, uh, they're less likely to... You know, he doesn't necessarily need a warrant in advance. Exactly. So, uh, everything is, seems to be in order for it, at the very least. Though, I have to say, of course, I never do approve. But, well, I will be around to make sure you don't get terribly injured again, Connor. Our usual fees. <laughs> I'm just imagining this wagon when you guys pull up that, you know... We, we've got this wall to protect us, and you pull this wall up with the holes in it, and then, like, Harmon is still standing, like, right over top of it, just looking down at it, going... Yeah, heads and shoulders above it. Yeah, it just doesn't work. Uh -huh. uh, but Harmon, you're is still sporting a regular shield, right? You haven't gone to Pavise yet? The Pavise in your game requires two hands. Yeah. But you could still carry one. Uh, I mean, Connor, that's the next thing for you to do is get a Pavasaurus to get a guy whose only job it is is to carry a wall, wall shield. Oh, yeah. Got the manpower for it.
I feel stupid. I, I'm so used to getting tea when I bought some Pepsi. I just took it to the table with me here and I shook it as if it was tea. Prize drink. Speaking of getting drinks, we are back. Yeah, actually, and I want to figure out my camera situation. Do you guys want to take a quick break? All right. Sorry. Normally, I wouldn't stop this early in the adventure, but I want to see what's going on in my house. Um, so yeah, get just you on like, camera. Yeah, see if we can get the camera set up. So quick break, and I'll be right back. I'm just going to check something. 